recorded. Okay. He hello, everybody. Welcome to Processing Payments for Good. My name is Kyla Hunt, and I am with TechSoup. And it looks like Alexia's picture has gotten turned off, but I will be sending that out to everybody so you will be seeing her smiling face. And with us today is Alexia Marcuse from Dharma. And also with us today is Megan Southern from the Northern Jaguar Project. Alexia is going to be talking with us a little bit about merchant services in general and about Dharma merchant services specifically. And Megan Southern is then going to talk a little bit about her organization, which I think will be a nice little visual break, talking about the Northern Jaguar Project. And then she's going to be talking a little bit about how her organization has worked with different merchant services providers, including Dharma. And we will be having questions throughout the, throughout the session. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead. Type those into the chat pane at any time. Um, and I will be taking a couple of questions after Alexia speaks, and then we will be handling the rest of the questions after Megan talks. And really quickly, before we get started, I did want to go ahead and ask this question, which is, how familiar are you with credit card processing? And of course, your options here are very familiar, somewhat familiar, and not at all familiar. Go ahead and let us know so we will know what skill level we're mostly speaking to. And as they come in, I'm going to leave it open for another 10 seconds. So I'll be closing it in 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, so it looks like about six of you are very familiar, so that's 9.5%. The vast majority of you are somewhat familiar, so that's 73%. And 17.5 of you are not at all familiar, so this will be a brand new topic for you. And luckily, Alexia has provided a really, really great summary of what Merchant Services provides. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and give it over to Alexia to get us started. So Alexia, go ahead and unmute yourself and take it away. Thanks so much, Kyla. And I just want to um, start by saying how grateful I am for this opportunity um, about talk, to, the talk, opportunity to talk about how and when to accept credit cards. And really my intention is to demystify the process for those of you, the majority of you who are somewhat familiar to answer um, any remaining questions that you have and just hopefully add some clarity um, for those of you who have no experience at all um, to really provide a, a great introduction. And for those of you who are very familiar, um, be able to share a little bit about our program that uh, we've got set up with TechSoup and uh, see if there's a possibility to um, maybe enhance the program that you already have. So I'll start out by describing a little bit about Dharma Merchant Services. It was started five years ago by the father-daughter team, um, Jeff and Alexia Marku. That's my dad and I right there. And uh, Jeff has had about 20 years of experience in the industry of merchant services. And through that time, he really got to see that there was a big need for more ethics in the industry. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about this, but because of the complex nature of the pricing around credit card processing, and also the fact that banks have outsourced the sales and marketing of merchant accounts, you're really forced to deal with the middleman, and that creates some opportunity for some um, hidden rates and fees and some excessive charges. And unfortunately, that's kind of become the standard in the industry. So we decided we could provide a better alternative. We could provide a company that fully disclosed all rates and fees, and also specifically sought, set out to serve those who serve. So folks like yourselves who are really trying to make a difference in the world and create that partnership of support uh, for mission-driven organizations. And a way that we realized we could really underscore that not only just with great service and, and full disclosure and low pricing, 
but that we could use our business to support the nonprofit community. And we do that by donating 10% of our annual gross profits on every account that we sign up. And when we work with a nonprofit, we allow that 10% to go back to the nonprofit organization itself. So in essence, it's like a rebate on the fees, and it comes back to the organization in the, in the form of a donation. So I'm going to advance to the next slide and just talk a little bit more about the, the motivation and the current um, state of the industry. Some of you who are very familiar with merchant services or even somewhat familiar might have already experienced some of the uh, egregious rates that are out there. Um, you know, at a usurious uh, level, uh, there's hidden fees. We often see cancellation charges in the hundreds if not thousands of dollars. We see merchants and nonprofits get um, looped into these equipment leases that end up costing a lot more than the equipment is actually worth. And just to be a little uh, lighthearted about it, essentially this is, these are sleazeballs getting rich off small merchants and nonprofits. And there's the famous used car salesman there. Um, and I'm delighted to say that fortunately this is not the case with TechSoup providers. So those of you who are members of TechSoup have the benefit of TechSoup really taking care of vetting the companies that are available through the TechSoup program to offer their services. So no worries if you are working with Sage Payment Systems or now Dharma who is now um, the, the second preferred provider for TechSoup. TechSoup's done a wonderful job of protecting you against that. However, it really is the state of the industry. And so we see a real need to educate, to inform, and essentially to rescue uh, nonprofits who are being taken advantage of by the industry the way it typically works. So I'd like to go on and talk about just in general what are merchant services. Uh, again, for those of you who are unfamiliar or maybe those of you who are familiar but just never really got an, an explanation of what this all means, um, I'll share that it's, it's merchant services is an industry term that involves setting up the accounts and the equipment in order to accept credit cards. So that could look like the basic merchant account, which is what funds you for your transactions. And I'm going to walk through a scenario of how exa exactly how that works. Um, and also the gateway accounts. If you are processing online, you need a gateway. And the terminals, if you are processing in person, you would swipe a credit card through a terminal. And we always explain that a gateway is like a terminal for online. So just like when you go into a store and you swipe your credit card through a machine, that machine takes the information, encrypts it, and sends it out securely over the payment network and it comes back with an approval or a decline. And at the end of the day, it sends out the transactions for processing. A gateway does exactly the same thing. And it's what you need whenever you process over the Internet. For example, if you take donations from your website or if you sell fundraising tickets from your website. And we also process gift and loyalty cards. So if you wanted to set up a gift card program, that falls under the umbrella of merchant services. And also check processing, both in person and online. So if you were receiving a large amount of checks for your donations, didn't want to have to take them to the bank and wait for them to clear, there are services and products that you can sign up for through merchant services where you can handle all of that um, faster, automated, electronic, um, so again you're not mailing those checks to the bank. So I'd like to get into how the process works, again just to provide a nice baseline. So for example, on Monday if you received $500 in donations, that day your donor's cards are charged. And the uh, the transactions are all collected either in that credit card terminal or in uh, your, your payment gateway. And at the end of the day, they are sent out for processing. And then two business days later, 
that full $500 is directly deposited into your checking account. Now I'll stop and say that that's how Dharma Merchant Services does it. There are other providers that do what's called net funding where they will subtract the fees for the processing out of that $500 and give you the net difference. So for example, if the fees were $20 to process that $500, you would only receive a $480 deposit. We obviously don't like doing it that way because it makes it very difficult to reconcile your transactions against your deposits. So what we do is called gross funding where we'll deposit that full $500. And it's all handled automatically. It's directly deposited into your checking account. And that, that is standard. All the processing is automated. Now if we're processing in February, in the first week of March, you would see all the fees for the February processing automatically withdrawn from your checking account. And then you will receive a statement that details February's processing and fees. Now again, this is based on a gross funding model. So if your fees had been taken out all along, you would only see the static monthly fees, maybe some additional fees that weren't included in that daily, um, daily withdrawal. But with us, you would see all the fees that were accrued over the course of the prior month. All right. And then I'd like to move on to the, the one of the two main questions with our how and when um, topic is when should you take credit cards? And really um, what, what the way we look at it is whenever it increases donations and whenever it increases your sales. Um, reason being it will provide convenient 24 by 7 self-service. If you've got a website, someone can go on and donate whenever they like. It's a very quick and easy process. And donors get points and miles um, I said especially American Express because they are really favored for their rewards program. Um, but it's something that we've seen as a very strong trend in the industry, and probably a lot of you already know this, but you know, there's that sense of I'd like to get something else back for my donation, and if my credit card is giving me points and miles, that makes me all the more inclined to go ahead and, and do that, that donation. Now secondly, when it increases sales, an important point here is that um, you're not limiting who you can sell to based on their cash on hand. Just this morning, literally about 20 minutes ago, I had a conversation with a nonprofit organization who actually found us through TechSoup, and they were doing a fundraiser by selling raffle tickets to a gala dinner at a Walmart. And she let me know that she was floored by how many folks did not have $5 to buy some raffle tickets. And this is a trend that um, we're seeing increasingly, especially as debit cards are more prevalent, that a lot of people just no longer carry cash. And so it's really important to offer an alternative form of payment, especially if you're out in the field and catching people when they might not be for instance, going to a farmer's market where they know they have to have cash. If you're just catching them kind of on the fly, you want to make sure you can take credit cards. So then the important point really comes, to, comes down to, well, how should you take credit cards? Because we all know that there's overhead when it comes to credit cards. And obviously if you can take checks and get cash for as much uh, processing as you'd like to do, by all means go for it because we'd all like to avoid the fees. But if you're finding that it would behoove your organization to take credit cards, it's really important to consider how to do that so that you're maximizing the benefit and minimizing the cost um, even operationally. So the way I broke it down is that there's really two main ways to approach taking credit cards. One is to work with a merchant service provider like Dharma or like Sage Payment Solutions, um, they are the other TechSoup provider, um, or some of you are already doing. Um, and that's where you can receive lower rates and fees, have more flexibility, and yet are paying monthly costs as compared to the other two major alternatives which is PayPal or Square. So you would look at PayPal for online processing, and a relatively new player in the market is Square, which would be for in-person processing. Now with those alternatives, 
you are paying higher rates and fees, and there is less flexibility around how you can work with those solutions, but there is no monthly cost. And just to be specific, that's the basic PayPal only, not a PayPal account where you have a virtual terminal in your keying and transactions. So that's how I broke it down. And I'd like to talk through each of these, those three points on each side um, and really show how the comparison shakes out. So first looking at the lower rates and fees. Every merchant service provider out there is covering the same cost because they are set by Visa and MasterCard. So no one merchant service provider has any kind of preferential treatment over another. And that's how we can all be competitive. And the way the interchange costs are set by Visa and MasterCard is there is always a rate and there is always a per item. And the cost varies by the credit card type. So for instance, if you are swiping a credit card and it is a debit card, the rate is 0.36, and I should just specify a technicality that that's actually a regulated debit card which is issued by a large bank that has $10 billion or more in assets under management. So that's like your Bank of America and your Chase and Citibank and Wells Fargo, some of these larger banks, which comprises about 75% of debit card usage. So on average you're going to see a rate of about 0.36. And again, these are Dharma's rates. So rates vary by merchant service provider because it varies based on the margin that they set over cost. But for example, these are our rates on the TechSoup program. So you can see debit is very low. And then on the higher end of the spectrum, it goes up to 2.56% and 20 cents for a business card. And that's where Visa and MasterCard set the cost to be higher because as it goes, folks spend more money on cards that are not under their name. It's like it's someone else's money. So you'll spend more on a business card than you would on a personal card. And Visa and MasterCard know that so that they set the cost a little bit higher. Now our margin is the same regardless of the card type. That's the way we feel is the most fair way to, pr to price. Um, so no matter what the credit card type is, you're always paying the same margin over cost. And just to explain how it works in the e-commerce environment, you'll see that the rates are slightly higher. Visa and MasterCard know that it's more risky to take transactions online, so the costs are higher. So it ranges from 0.41% and 37 cents on debit to point, uh, sorry, to 2.61% and 25 cents on a business card. So that's how the pricing model works with merchant service providers. Now alternatively with PayPal and Square, they have a one rate fits all model. So for instance with Square, it's 2.75% swiped, no transaction fee, but as you can see, the 2.75 is a lot higher, especially when we're looking at debit card usage. And just to throw out there, if the average transaction is less than $70, a conservative estimate of debit card usage is about 50%. So if you're selling or taking donations under $70, about 50% of folks are going to use a debit card. So that's where you can see that you know, the benefit of these lower rates really kicks in because um, you want that lower debit card rate. And alternatively with Square, if you key in a transaction, it's 3.5% and a $0.15 cent transaction key. So as we can see, there's higher rates, um, but that's where we're going to compare to the monthly fees, and we'll talk about uh, price, uh, transaction volume after that. So just to cover PayPal, a lot of you probably already know it's 2.2% for nonprofits and a $0.30 cent transaction fee. So again, a little bit higher than debit. Well, a lot higher than debit, still less than the business rates, but overall it's going to result in a, in a higher um, overall processing rate. So the next of the three uh, points to consider was flexibility. So merchant services can definitely provide more flexibility than Square or PayPal. So for instance, if you are processing with a credit card terminal, you can use your existing equipment. Uh, and it doesn't rely on a smartphone or iPhone um, to do processing like Square does. For online processing, 
if you are working with a merchant service provider, you can link your online processing to a donor database or third-party software. You can set up recurring donations. And again, just talking about basic PayPal because we are talking about um, the whole no monthly fee situation with PayPal, whereas as soon as you need that virtual terminal and some of these additional features, you are paying a monthly fee. You can also link your merchant service provider to a shopping cart. Uh, you can set up custom receipt pages and receipt management. I really the sky is the limit. Um, and another point that Megan's actually going to talk a little bit about how it was important for them is the donor or, or the client stays on your website. So you really are able to produce a, a fully equipped e-commerce solution. So if that's important to your donors that they feel more trust and feel that there's more security around staying in your data on your site, then um, that's something that's included here as an important aspect of the flexibility. So the last point um, was about monthly fees. And so this is where you really need to consider how um, much volume you're doing because you need to do enough volume to cover these monthly fees. So with the merchant service provider, you're going to have um, a merchant account fee, a monthly fee right there to have the account open. If you're processing online, you're going to have a gateway account fee. That's another monthly fee. If you're processing online, here I show a picture of a smartphone uh, where we can do smartphone processing. We can also do wireless terminal processing. But you're going to pay a wireless fee with the merchant service provider as opposed to Square which does not have a monthly fee. And lastly, what's kind of become the bane of the merchant services industry is a payment card industry or PCI compliance fee. And this is something that has been mandated by Visa and MasterCard for merchant service providers, but it's not currently applying to PayPal or Square. So that's another monthly fee that you have to cover. With Dharma, just to give you an estimate of what it is, it's $6.95. We've seen monthly PCI compliance fees go all the way up to $25. So it could be a significant cost uh, to cover. So just something to consider. So I'll just sum up what the deciding factors are um, for choosing either to go with a merchant service provider or PayPal or Square. So it really comes down to the volume of processing. So what's the frequency? Are you processing infrequently, maybe most months with little or no processing, that's where you're not going to be able to receive the benefit of the lower rates because the monthly fees are going to offset that because of the, the low processing. So that's where you're really going to want to look at PayPal or Square. Also, the need to key in any sales. For example, if you have um, a campaign that sends out uh, mailers and you get back these donor cards that you need to key in, um, you're definitely going to be better off with the merchant service provider um, because PayPal will then tack on those monthly fees. If you don't have any need to do that and you just want to have like a Donate Now button on your website, we think PayPal Basic is a great option. And then lastly, if you have a lot of need for flexibility or a full website integration, that's where you're going to need to work with a merchant service provider who has, uh, has the ability to offer that, those services. And then lastly, I'm just going to cover um, the Dharma Merchant Services TechSoup program. It's as you get from the point of admission of Dharma, it's it's a dream, it's a it's a cornerstone of what we do to support the nonprofit community. So it's a dream come true to to be available option on TechSoup and to serve um, their members. So we have a program that has discounted rates and fees. We do not charge a monthly minimum on processing which is common in the industry. We never charge a cancellation fee which again is very common in the industry. Uh, so even if you are doing a one-time event where you might be raising um, significant volume in, in, in donations or doing processing, it's something you can set up with us for a one-time event and then close the account when you don't, when you don't need it so you do not not face the cancellation fee. We've waived our setup fees, so it really doesn't cost anything to get started. We offer discounted credit card terminals, and all of the training and support on uh, all of our services is included um, with all the pricing on the TechSoup program. So I'll display my contact information here, so anyone is welcome to reach out to me directly, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you so much, Alexia. That was a lot of really great information. 
We've had um, some really great questions coming in. So I'm going to just ask um, just a couple of them before we get into Megan's section. And then any of the other questions um, I will handle at the end as time allows. Um, okay, great. So Cherie asked at the very beginning where she said that she was very interested in hearing information about using cell phones with swipe cards. I didn't mm -hmm. know if you had any information on that. Sure. So that's where um, Square offers the option for the infrequent and low volume processing. And then we absolutely have an option to process with cell phones as well. Right now our solution is limited to the iPhone, and we are working on finding a provider for smartphones in general like Androids and um, Blackberries. Okay. Great. Thank you. And I know Betty had asked, um, she was saying that regarding the 10% to nonprofit, she was wondering if that came back to your own nonprofit or to a nonprofit of their choice. I believe one of um, my staff, um, Allison Bliss from TechSoup, said it was for, to your own nonprofit. Is that, is that right? Well, if, if that's our default, um, mm -hmm. we assume that the nonprofit would like to have that 10% going back to them. But actually, we always let any account holder choose where it goes. So for instance, all of our for-profit clients choose where their donations go. So certainly if a nonprofit wanted to donate to another nonprofit, we would absolutely support that. Okay, great. Um, and then Susan had a couple of really good questions. The first one was, how does an organization qualify for Visa Charity Rates MCC 8398? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, we, we always recommend that um, to our underwriters. It really comes down to an underwriting decision. Um, there are uh, definitions around the 8398 category, and it really is based on charitable and social service organizations. And um, I actually have a, a whole list of all of the – they're called MCC codes. Um, and I'd be happy to send that to anyone who's interested. But 8398 is classified as a non-political fundraising organization, organizations engaged in soliciting contributions, and social service organizations engaged in social welfare services. So that would include advocacy groups, community organizations, and health agencies. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's really, that's really, really helpful. And again, if anybody wants that um, information or wants to follow up with Alexia about that, her email is on the um, screen right now, and I will be sending it out to everybody after, after the fact. Um, and then I'm going to handle one more question before we go into Megan's section, and then all the other questions we'll handle at the end. Um, so this is also from Susan. She was wondering, are there any legal ways to add a surcharge to cover the cost of accepting credit cards? Oh, I'm so glad that question came up. Um, so obviously Visa and MasterCard are, are pretty um, insistent about not passing the surcharges on to um, donors. Um, it's actually written into the regulations around accepting credit cards. So the way around that that um, we've seen is you can offer a cash or check discount for a product and service, um, but you can't add a surcharge. Now we've seen you know, processing and handling fees around transactions, um, but when it comes to straight donations, um, it, it would be a matter of trying to increase the donation amount. Um, but it's, it's not legally possible to pass on the surcharges directly. Okay. Thanks for that really concise answer. That's really, really helpful. Um, any of the other questions that we have, and we, we do have a lot of them, we'll handle at the end. Um, and so Alexia, um, those questions, a lot of them will probably be for you. So um, okay. at the end I will let you know when to unmute yourself again. So thank you so much. That was really great. You're welcome, and Kyla. And I just wanted to offer, if we don't have time for questions, I'm happy to respond to everyone else's questions offline. Um, okay. So just want to offer that. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. If, if for some reason, everybody, if we don't get to your question, you can directly email the presenters, or um, I will be sending 
them the questions that we didn't get to, so they might be just following up with you directly. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Megan. Um, and again, Megan Southern is from the Northern Jaguar Project. She's going to start off talking a little bit about her actual organization, which you know, I know this topic that we're talking about today is a lot of numbers, and um, it's, it's kind of nice, I think, to have a little bit of a break and <laughs> look at these beautiful pictures. Um, and just, I know Megan has, is just getting over a cold, so um, just bear that in mind. <laughs> so Megan, take it away. Thanks, Kyla. Um, so the Northern Jaguar Project is one of Dharma's clients, and we have been for a few years. I'm going to start out and just give you a background of who, briefly, of who we are as an organization. In 2003, a small group of conservationists from the southwestern United States and Mexico formed the Northern Jaguar Project to revitalize the jaguar population and work with ranchers and schools to promote conservation. We have a 50,000-acre a uh, protected core reserve that we've purchased, which is shown here, and is approximately 125 miles south of the U.S.-Mexico border. Jaguars once roamed widely, extending as far north into Arizona, where I live, and New Mexico. And today it is believed that only 10,000 wild jaguars remain worldwide, making them an endangered throughout their entire range. This photograph was taken by one of our motion-triggered cameras on our protected uh, reserve just a few weeks ago. The reason we are focusing on this ecologically rich, extremely remote, and amazingly rugged habitat is because it is the northernmost location where female jaguars can still be found, and obviously a breeding population means that there will be cubs as well as can be seen here. Um, by preserving this habitat, we're providing an umbrella of protection for the wide range of species that are found in this area, from migratory birds to butterflies. There are four large cats found here in total, including mountain lions, ocelots, and this stunning photograph here of a bobcat. Again, this is the Northern Jaguar Reserve. This crucial safe zone has become the heart of a much larger project to identify and promote safe passage corridors for jaguars to return to former habitat here in, the, in their northern range. So for those of you who are, a lot of you on the poll said you are somewhat familiar with credit cards. So what may interest you um, more than anything else are the options or for, for where you work and who you work with as a merchant service provider. We're a small organization and use a small local bank here in Tucson. And when we were first interested in, in accepting credit cards a long time ago, our board didn't know the first thing about where to start the process. Our bank had an agreement that um, kind of directed us and referred us to Wells Fargo's merchant services. So we used Wells Fargo for years, but we always had a really hard time with it. Um, one, because they are a huge bank. Two, because our interactions with them were rarely helpful and always <laughs> frustrating. And three, because the monthly fees that they charged were not only steep, but continued to rise steadily. So we started to question where, whether it financially made sense for us to continue accepting credit cards at all, which is not a question you want to be asking when you are a nonprofit that depends on uh, donor support. So we had to find a better solution and started exploring different options. This was several years ago, and every choice that we found mirrored Wells Fargo. There were huge mega companies with very high monthly rates, especially for us since we don't really bring in that much income through credit cards in the larger scheme of things. So we were redesigning our website and thought to ask our website developer who works with small nonprofits who he could recommend for a reference. He suggested using PayPal um, since I believe the rates they are charged are based on quantity and uh, they're rather than set monthly fees, and it's really easy to set up. 
uh, yet again we hesitated because we wanted to keep people on our site, like Alexia mentioned. We already had an account with Authorize.net, which is the payment gateway that we liked. And we thought our supporters, who tend to be older and not super techno savvy, would be hesitant to donate if they thought the money was first going through PayPal instead of directly toward us. Oops, I think I advanced one slide more. Um, it was through a, through a bit of luck that after many frustrating months and countless dead ends in our search that we eventually found Dharma Merchant Services. If I remember correct, we saw them listed in the National Green pages and immediately realized that there was potential and possibility to match what we were looking for or what we were dreaming <laughs> that could be the solution. Up until that point, we hadn't realized that there were credit card processing companies that were into sustainability and social responsibility. Um, we were drawn to them as a small business as opposed to an international bank, and because they give those, that 10% of their profits to charity, like was mentioned in this case, right back to us. Um, we like their mission um, and that they have a list on their website of how they are being green, from where they bank to using public transportation and prioritizing sustainable energy. So perhaps most important was that they came from a place of understanding and support of our organization's mission and purpose. Suddenly we were interacting with real people who were extremely excited about our work, helpful, responsive, and also really very kind. It was refreshing to have a consistent dialogue and personal relationship with Alexia instead of whoever happened to take our call in the Wells Fargo Customer Service Department. So um, we signed up and went through a e very easy application process and saw our rates decline immediately to something that was reasonable instead of excessive. We accept credit cards online through our website, which you can see here. Um, the bottom's cut off, but where it says donation allocation, people can click if they want it to go to a particular fund. There's also the option for monthly contributions here, which I am a huge fan of, and it's such a, such a great way to receive regular support through recurring donations. And um, then people are directed toward a second page. Um, oops, I'm figuring out the slides. Sorry about that. A second page um, where they enter all of their credit card information. Um, so we also accept credit cards um, through our donors um, sending back envelopes in the mail. And we take credit cards at events, though um, <laughs> we're not super techno savvy ourselves, so we just use those same envelopes, take their um, credit card information, and then come back and enter it on online through authorize.net, which is shown here. And you can log directly into authorize.net, which is linked to our website, um, to process those transactions. This is where we process the recurring monthly donors. You can search for transactions or sometimes, very rarely, um, give refunds if need be. Um, everything runs super smoothly. And because of this, we don't actually interact with Alexia and Dharma all that often because um, we haven't ever had any problems. So um, with that, we're very pleased knowing that we use a merchant service provider that's oriented toward nonprofits. It just changes the way of doing business to one that feels better and knowing that they're behind making this process so efficient for our organization and that if we need to call on them that they will answer our questions quickly and honestly and with respect. So um, there is, uh, that's, that's all I um, had to say, but I see some questions I could answer, but I'll let Kyla take it from there. Thank you so much, Megan. That was really helpful. I was actually wondering, um, I know you mentioned at the very beginning of your section that um, just kind of getting into and learning about credit card processing in general was really overwhelming. Was there any uh, resources other than just going to the banks and going to the merchant services providers um, that you found helpful? Um, that we found helpful? 
Yeah, that like like was there anywhere that you like I don't know, I, I just didn't know if there were any like websites or any resources that you found particularly helpful in actually learning about credit card processing. Honestly, TechSoup is the most helpful, <laughs> the most helpful <laughs> location, um, the forums and information that can be found on the TechSoup website. It sounded like a plant, but it totally <laughs> wasn't everybody. It's a good place to, to learn everything. And even though we were TechSoup members back then, we didn't um, think of that right of way because we've used TechSoup mostly for product donations. Mm -hmm. um, but once we did stumble on that, eventually there's a wealth of information there. Great. Thank you. And I am going to be sending out, um, just so everybody knows, a couple of articles from TechSoup about credit card processing um, in the, in the follow-up email. Um, and so I'm going to ask just a couple of questions that I think are directly to you, Megan, and then I'm going to just kind of go back um, and handle some of the questions that we still have outstanding. We do have a lot of questions that have come in. And um, those questions, whether or not it's Megan or Alexia who feels um, like they can answer the question, either one of you can. Um, so Megan, Melanie asks, and you know, feel free to answer this or not, but um, how much have you brought in with rebates from Dharma? Um, that's a very good question. Um, we the way that Dharma works is that if they give back 10% of their profits based on your income um, to you. So um, the way that works for us, our volume is not super high. Um, I would have to, to look it up, but it's less than $20,000 a year um, through credit cards. So. Um, in two years, I think we've gotten fifty dollars back. And Dharma has a program where, if once once a year they give um, give checks to you know they distribute the the checks once a year annually. And if a nonprofit hasn't raised enough money to accumulate fifty dollars after two years, then they'll automatically um, kind of balance it out to that amount. So. I guess the and that seems to translate that the the minimum you would um, make would be fifty dollars every two years or twenty five dollars a year, and um, more than that if you have a, a greater volume of transactions. Alexia can correct me if I'm wrong. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great. That was great, Megan. And just to clarify, um, we do try to make the donations when the um, donation amount is $50 or more. That helps keep uh, our administration costs down and also keeping, it keeps the processing costs down on the donation checks. Um, but as Megan said, we do take any unallocated funds, um, which is surprisingly a significant amount uh, just because not everyone um, takes advantage of the donation program, meaning they never choose a beneficiary. Um, we take those unallocated funds and we use those to round up um, nonprofits who have had a rolling balance for two years or more. Okay, great. Thank you for that clarification. And um, we do have another question that, that either um, Megan or, or Alexia, feel free to answer this. Um, Pam wanted just some clarification. She said she's confused about why the Northern Jaguar Project needs a direct relationship with the gateway provider because um, she thought that merchant services providers handles that relationship. So I didn't know if either of you could clarify that a that's, little bit. That's confusing when you're just starting out with like, isn't authorized.net the merchant service provider? Like that's that's something that is important to figure out. And uh, my understanding is that the gateway provider, like Alexia said at the beginning, is how you connect to the merchant services provider online. So you use the gateway provider to do your process your online transactions, but merchant um, Dharma or the merchant service provider is kind of facilitating that that process is how I would sum it up as the kind of on the novice end of it. Okay, great. Yeah, that was because we've had a couple of yeah, questions. Yeah. yeah, we've had a couple of questions. We had another from Trisha that was almost exactly the same, asking if she could get an explanation between Authorize.net and Dharma. Um, 
Did you have anything to add to that, Alexia? Or no, yeah, I just want to say, actually, Megan did a beautiful job with that, and 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 really uh, think of Authorize.net as the equipment that you're using to process the credit cards. Yes, as the merchant service provider, we absolutely do handle all the setup for you. So we take care of linking the merchant account with the gateway. And we even walk you through activating it and running your first test transactions, both through the gateway as Megan showed in a screenshot where you can key right into Authorize.net, and also from your website. So thank you. That's great. <laughs> That's great. There's the virtual terminal. Thanks, Megan. Um, where you can key a transaction there. So we walk you through how to do that. So you make sure you, uh, we, we make sure you know how to do that. And um, that also proves it's working successfully. And then uh, we also walk you through processing from your website. So we can run a test transaction there and make sure your website is talking to the gateway properly. So in terms of, of, of all the pieces involved, you can think of it as layers. So the, the website is what faces your donor. The gateway sits behind that, and the merchant account sits behind the gateway. And it's what finally takes all the transactions, sends them off to the bank, and then um, funds you for those transactions. So the merchant account is really only um, Think of it like an unsecured line of credit. It's what actually gives you the money for the, the credit card transaction where if I made a $100 transaction, I have until whenever I want to pay off my credit card. But you would like those funds without having to wait for me to do that. So that the actual money for the $100 transaction comes from the merchant account, goes directly into your checking account. Great. Thank you. Um, and we do have while we're on the while we're on the topic of authorized.net, I do have a couple of other questions um, or surrounding that. Um, Betty was wondering if there's a charge from authorized.net. There is, and um, it's about twenty dollars a month, a little bit a little bit of change more than that um, that we pay, and it automatically is deducted from our checking account each month. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Gail okay. was wondering where the credit card numbers are stored through your website. So is it on your site if, or if is it authorized.net? Mm -hmm, that's a great question. If people um, go to our website and fill out the donation form to process their credit card that way, then authorized.net is kind of a security feature, hides the credit card information from us as well. So it's stored um, I don't know if it's on Authorize.net or in Dharma, but I assume it's in Authorize.net. <laughs> and um, that information is not accessible to us as the nonprofit. There is a way to go back in and automatically select to, to rebill each transaction, but they're not going to share the full credit card information with you um, just for security reasons. Okay. Thank you. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I do want to take some time and kind of go back and look at some of the questions that were asked earlier um, So when, when Alexia was talking. Um, but Megan, if you have any answers for these as well, you know, feel free to, to chime in. Um, we did have some questions, a couple of questions that came in um, wondering if Dharma connects or integrates with uh, programs like QuickBooks. Oh, that's a great question. Um, and before I answer that, because it's a quick answer, I want to also um, Acknowledge Megan's uh, choice of TechSoup as a great resource for learning about merchant services. Um, but to throw out another one, it's called Merchant Maverick. And the website is, I think it's merchantmaverick.com, or you can just Google Merchant Maverick. They, they do an independent review of most merchant service providers out there. And um, they, rate, they rate them based on their own interactions. They actually call in and pose as a customer and, and um, provide that independent third-party review. So I just wanted to put that out there Thank um, you as so well. much for that, Alexia. I'll, be, I'll look up that link, and I'll go ahead and send that out with all the um, additional links that we'll be sending out after the webinar. So thank you for that. Oh, great. Thanks for doing that, Kyla. And then with regard to QuickBooks, QuickBooks also owns a merchant services company called Intuit. And so they have um, an exclusive agreement within, with their own merchant services company as to who can provide merchant services when processing directly through QuickBooks. 
So if you want to be able to log into QuickBooks, enter a transaction, and charge a person's credit card directly from QuickBooks, you can only work with Intuit Merchant Services. Now we've done a lot of statement comparisons against um, Intuit, and whereas we can always offer a savings, um, we're not able to work with um, QuickBooks. So there it's a trade-off between the operational cost um, of having to re-key a transaction into QuickBooks if you process it another way, or the efficiency of being able to process right within QuickBooks but paying a slightly, slightly higher rate for that. Now I will say Authorize.net does have the ability to export transactions in a format that QuickBooks can read. So you don't necessarily have to re-key those transactions manually, but it would be a manual step to extract the data and upload it into QuickBooks. Great. Thank you so much. Um, this question was asked pretty early, um, wanting to know just the advantages and disadvantages um, for those of us who want to do both online donations and accepting payments at an event. Um, so I didn't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about that. Oh, sure. Um, it's a good point to understand that Visa and MasterCard require two separate merchant accounts for online processing versus in-person in processing. Um, and as uh, you might have noticed on the rate explanation, the rates are actually lower for in-person processing versus online processing. So in a typical scenario, if you, uh, for instance, I was just talking with this merchant who runs a bingo hall, and that's how they raise funds for their organization. They have a credit card terminal in the bingo hall, and they swipe transactions there. That's an in-person merchant account. They also take donations on their website, and that's going to be an e-commerce merchant account. Now, there's multiple ways to go about that though. That's a typical scenario. As Megan showed and still has the screen displayed, um, she can also go into Authorize.net and key in a credit card transaction. So if the volume for uh, the in-person event is going to be fairly low, uh, you don't have to set up a separate account. You could key it into this um, virtual terminal from Authorize.net. Um, or you could also look at something like Square uh, with a smartphone. So this is where we kind of always have the conversation about what's the volume, what do you need, um, and we just come up with the most cost-effective solution. Even if it means you know, using PayPal for the online or using Square for the in-person, uh, it's important to consider what's the volume going through those accounts. Because if it makes more sense to consolidate it and just use the Authorize.net virtual terminal, we can suggest that. So for example, if folks are filling out donor cards at an event, um, and you, don't, you just want to give them the cards, let's say at their dinner table, and you don't necessarily want to process the transaction right then or there and walk around with a smartphone and swipe their cards, that's where you can have the benefit of just keying those transactions into an Authorize.net virtual terminal. I would, I would also throw in that for us when we're at an event, like having a donor just fill out a piece of paper that we come back and do, a prop, you know, enter key into the virtual terminal works for us because they're donations and we wouldn't otherwise be receiving that income and that support. But we're not usually selling items, which I think might make it more um, complicated for some people if they're actually give, you know, selling a t-shirt or you know have something that's like going out <laughs> um, where you would want maybe the security of knowing the credit card is going to work, although our, our approach is usually pretty trusting that people who want to support us aren't going to just <laughs> um, give us bad credit card information. <laughs> right, right. Good point, Megan. Thank you. And I know a lot of um, what we've been talking about is using terminals. And we did have a question from Stacy who says that they currently do not use any terminals um, and their organization has to call in all credit card purchases to obtain approval numbers. Um, so how would you work with that situation? Sure. That, that's a service that we offer as well. Uh, we call it uh, ARU or Automated Response Unit where you're just following prompts on a telephone. Um, there we, we've 
recommend that actually before Square came out um, for very low volume, very infrequent processing. Most of the time we see about a dollar per call charge for processing that way. So again, very good for low volume. There's usually not a, a monthly fee or an equipment fee. Um, but it's, it's rare that that's the best solution for um, an organization especially since Square has come out you know, and is offering that low volume, no monthly fee type of situation. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, and just so everybody knows, we do only have about 4 minutes left. So um, there are going to be some questions that we probably don't get to. But again, you can feel free to email the presenters. I'll be sending out their email addresses. Um, and we will strive to get all of your questions answered after the fact because we, we do save the questions. Um, so Melanie was wondering where Dharma is located and how many nonprofits do you currently serve? Oh, thanks for asking. That's great. We are based in San Francisco. We have support offices in Schaumburg, Illinois as well. Um, you know, 40% of our um, client base, which is right around 2,000 right now, is nonprofits. Um, so that's 800 organizations that we're working with. Okay, thank you. Um, and Paul was wondering, he says that our organization only processes credit cards once a year during our annual benefit event. Would they incur monthly charges the other 11 months? Oh yeah, that's a great question. Thanks, Paul. Um, if if you're not if you don't need the account and you only in the other months, if you only need it for the annual event, what we recommend is opening the account um, before you need it, like giving us some time to set it up and test it, and then just close the account after the annual event. Um, we work with the Boys and Girls Club of Metro Denver that way. They do an annual. Um, raffle for a, a house actually. And um, as soon as the raffle is over, they close the account. And then there are no monthly fees at all. The account is just closed. And it's, it's pretty easy to reopen. We, we, our out, whole application process takes about two business days. And um, especially for a nonprofit organization, there's no uh, Social Security number needed. There's no signature of a personal guarantee. So it's really just a matter of uh, a one quick signature, we can send you a pre-filled application. We can usually have the account open in one to two days. Okay, great. And I'm going to go ahead and just um, ask one more question. And this is from May, and she was wondering how long is the transition process if they want to switch to Dharma? Oh, yeah, thank you. That's a great question. Well, what we always do if anyone is already processing is we do a statement comparison. We just want to make absolutely sure that the way the unique organization is processing um, would be uh, benefited by our program. So we do a statement comparison. We usually have that turned around in about two days. And then we walk uh, the um, organization through our application together over the phone. That takes about 10 minutes. And then we email it out, and then it needs to come back with uh, signatures, 501C, and a copy of a pre-printed voided check. And then we usually have the approval two, up to two business days after that. With regard to the transition post-approval, it does depend a little bit on how folks are already processing. So uh, if there's uh, third-party software involved, we want to get them included. So we set up a transition schedule where we can have all the right support folks involved and run test transactions, make sure everything's working successfully. Um, if it's a matter of reprogramming the terminal, we can do that right over the phone. or um, switching up a gateway account, we can also do that right over the phone. So it's, we try to make it as painless and efficient as possible. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Alexia. And thank you both Alexia and Megan for this really, really informative session. Um, I know I learned a lot. So that's, it's been really great. Um, I also want to take a moment and just thank um, everybody on the back end here at TechSoup who's also been helping out. So thank you to Ale Alex, Allison, and Becky who have been helping out with answering questions. Um, just a little bit about who TechSoup is. Um, we are a nonprofit like a lot of you out there. Um, and we do try to provide technology resources and just the technology um, so your organization can operate at your full potential. Um, and a little bit about 
those resources that I just mentioned. If you go to our current site, so TechSoup.org, you can go ahead and visit our Learning Center to find some articles. You can go ahead and read our blog which always has some really, really great posts. Um, you can go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our TechSoup newsletters, so Buy the Cup and New Product Alerts. And finally, I do want to just take one moment and thank ReadyTalk. Um, ReadyTalk is one of our webinar uh, platform donor partners, and that is the platform we have been having this webinar on. So thank you again to ReadyTalk. And of course, again, a big thank you to both Alexia and Megan um, for this really great session. If for some reason we didn't get to your question, you can feel free to email either me at khunt at techsoup.org, or you can email the presenters directly. And I will go ahead and be sending out the recording of the session along with all the links and contact information of everybody involved. Um, so thank you everybody, and I really hope that you have a really great day. Thanks. Thank you. Please stand by.